Okay, we live, man. I don't even know. Man. All right. We live, man. Welcome to the Toronto Beckham Podcast. It's your host, Toronto Beckham. I'm here with my guest. We got Liz. Give them your rap name because there's a lot going on. <laughs> my rap name is Jose because I drink a lot of Jose, period. Okay, so what should I refer to you as? You can call me Liz. We're going to call you Liz during the interview. Period. And I just want to give my girl a shout out. She's right here next to me. She made this fish and she wanted me to give her a live rating. I think this is amazing. This is damn near a 10. It was good. So we got to give a moment of silence for this fish. And um, we're going to light some weed up and get this motherfucking show started. I'm going to pop this bottle. Man, this is too good. I shouldn't have ate that. Wow. Right Good there. More. I shouldn't have ate that right there. You want some more? No, I'm good. All right. All right, so we got Liz, a.k.a. Jose, on the show. Um, just tell the people where you're from so we can get it started. We got to go from the beginning. Right. I'm from Midland, born and raised. Born and raised in Midland. Yeah. Um, how was it growing up in Midland? Growing up in Midland was really wild. <laughs> It was, it's small, so it's like, you gotta make the most of it, but everybody know each other, and it's just, it was nutty, but it was fun. All of that in that little bit of time. Yeah, but it's a good place to raise your kids. So you would say Midland is a good place to raise your kids. Yes. So uh, so you would say you had a good childhood, it wasn't too much, yeah, too I much violence like going on? I mean, you got your average amount of black violence, <laughs> but nothing too crazy. It was It was decent, it was nice. I'm finna pop this bottle, so y'all hold on. You, you're scared. She looks scared. I look if scared. You, if you make a mess, just know. Oh, there it goes. There we go. A white carpet, huh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what was that sound? That was it wasn't. Oh shit, we got bro and Xbox. Let me get him up for there. <laughs> yeah, so you just not like it wasn't dangerous or it wasn't like cause I had a, I had somebody on from Midland and he said it was treacherous around those parts of the world. <laughs> I used to live out there for a while. I didn't really notice the treachery, so I'm tr I'm thinking like maybe back in y'all day when before I lived out there for a little bit, like was it a little treacherous? I mean. I'm not going to knock nobody's story if the nigga said his life was treacherous, then it probably <laughs> was. My life okay. was not treacherous. Less killing, more drug dealing, for sure. Oh, so she got right into it. <laughs> Am I good? Yeah. She got right into it, so yeah. less killing, more drug dealing. So you would say you was kind of hand-to-hand -hand in high school, like, or no? No. Nah. you just said drug dealing. I do not sell drugs. The, oh, okay. And I am not affiliated with anybody who does. <laughs> <laughs> that that sound crazy. That no, sound crazy right, right there. We going <laughs> We going to gloss over that. <laughs> we going to gloss over. Why did you say that? that? <laughs> She just she watched a few interviews maybe. <laughs> Look, how was high school? Tell me about Lincoln Park. You went to Lincoln Park. I went to Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park. It was like some shit that you would see on TV for real. Like there was different shit every day. It was like it was kind of like your average high school, but there was just a lot of different kinds of people from a lot of different places, and it was a lot of white people. So it wasn't like a bad thing. Like, right. you know, you get a bunch of niggas together and it could be a bad thing, but it wasn't a bad thing. Um, yeah, Lincoln Park was dope. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. You graduated? I did. Class Top of 2011, of new. But I graduated. And made it through. I did. <laughs> you got any cool high school stories? Give me one, one classic story that you'll never forget from high school. It's my new segment. I just made it. <laughs> I'm not going to say no names. If y'all stumble across this, y'all know what y'all did. Oh. <laughs> y'all know what y'all did. But 
I guess it was like one of the biggest scandals out of our school because you know, Lincoln Park was wild, but this girl named White Chocolate, I'm not lying, <laughs> was sucking dicks, multiple dicks at once in the bathroom on the second floor. She did like Quando Rondo's baby mom. <laughs> she sucks six, six niggas. <laughs> Yo, chill. I'm drunk. I'm sorry. When I want to say, I could give a fuck. Uh, oh, God. But no, she was definitely we gonna keep sucking that. dick. We're going to keep that. I like that. Mm-hmm. I need that. <laughs> Shout out to my nigga Tay. We're going to get to that. <laughs> but yeah, she was so white chocolate. White chocolate is what they called her. It took us forever to find out exactly who white chocolate was. So she had was. like a name like before you even knew who she was. Yeah, so I assume she been sucking dick in the bathroom. But I only know about the one time she got caught. She got caught? Yeah. By like a school Staff. authority? Okay. She Staff, got suspended? I think. But the niggas didn't. <laughs> you couldn't do that in 2021. <laughs> There was a lot of that going on in those times, and and I'll get people on to verify that, but yeah, <laughs> so that's probably one of the wildest stories you had in high school, huh? Yeah, there was like your average everyday wild shit. Like, we had like flash dance type shit, people dancing on balconies, open mic Fridays, people's performing and shit, so sucking dick was, that was a big deal. Yeah. They just wasn't doing that. They was doing other stuff. Like coke. Yeah. Yeah. Shrimp. Acid. <laughs> All right, after high school, boom, you hit college? Yes, I did. What college did you go to? I went to Bradford in the city. It was like a business college, a very big waste of time. That was on uh, Penn Avenue. No. It was in Station Square. Uh, Okay, she went to Bradford. (laughs) (laughs) Station Square. I was forced to go there. I didn't want to go there. Who forced forced you? My mom, because my brother went there. So she wanted me to go where he went. We was there together. (laughs) And it was really some shit. That was some shit. Tell me about it. So the dorms, if any of y'all watching are familiar with the South Side, and I'm sure y'all are, Mm -hmm. the dorms are like on 22nd Street, right behind East Carson. So like right in front of the plaza where like Rainbow, John Eagle, the hair store, all that shit's at, right? So the school's down Station Square. Mm -hmm. And it was one dorm. Every other floor was like, guys, girls, guys, girls, guys, girls. Yeah. The programs were (laughs) were 24 months long. And that's where I really learned about whores. Ooh, this is getting spicy. Let me get another blunt. Asia. The volume. Nah, let me get the blunt. Here, just get after me. She can light that up. So you said that's when you first learned about horse. And yeah. I, I I had that question down, but she just already went into it. Get into it. Yeah, like, that's where I really, like, started ex- experiencing and seeing, like, whores gone wild. Like, dead ass. Because these, you got to think about it. Like, these are like a bunch of bitches from small towns. Like, bitches from Midland. Bitches from Beaver County. Beaver Falls. Ambridge. Like, small town bitches who grew up in small places so they get to the city and they're right behind East Carson and I mean from Thursday to Saturday nine o'clock these bitches is hitting the strip getting dressed acting like they can get in somewhere and then we had whim too like so you really just had the fucking the the girls going crazy they was just fucking everywhere sneaking niggas in the dorms and I'm from Midland and I you know I didn't fuck with a lot of niggas growing up so I wasn't used to no shit like that. <laughs> like, these bitches was wow. Shout out to my bitches. That was wow. <laughs> you got names or you just want to keep no, them nameless? I'm going to keep them nameless. But if anybody knows me from college, then y'all know the bitches. We're going to find out because <laughs> I'm interviewing every single person. We're going to get to the bottom of this one day. Maybe. Not all of my bitches was whores, but there was whores. Give me the craziest story of college. Mm. (laughs) It's a crazy story about my friends. I mean, I'm not really 
we don't really talk no more. We're cool. <laughs> I respect him, like I or whatever. But like, I ain't gonna say no names or whatever. I'm gonna just tell y'all mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. So, me and my friends on the weekends, we sometimes we would go to other schools, you know, IUP shit like that. And so we go up to Claritin, Clarion, Clarion. Yeah, there. And it's me. My two black friends and we took a white bitch that <laughs> was in our dorm with us. There was four of us to a dorm. Mm-hmm. So we go up there or whatever and we're all chilling and I'm like the goofy friend. Like I'm the kind of friend that you bring and we smoke weed and we drink and we laugh and I was friends with bitches who like to go fuck while I'm smoking and drinking and laughing and having a good time. Dead ass because we're not gonna ignore the elephant in the room. A bitch is big. So, like, back then, niggas wasn't really checking for big bitches, and I'm mean, so I really wasn't checking for niggas either. But at the time, it was like, you know, let's bring the bitches. She's pretty. These are her horn-ass friends. She gonna come. We gonna get her high. We gonna get her drunk. And bitches is gonna fuck. And that's what the fuck they did. So we go up there, and we're in this little-ass... It's not a little-ass dorm room, but it's little. Like, there's two bedrooms. There's the living room. There's the kitchen. I got two bitches fucking in the one bedroom, right? Two of my friends is fucking in a one bedroom. The white bitch is fucking and she ain't never fucked a nigga before. So like, this is a big deal. She don't know what to do and she's freaking out. So I'm like, all right, can't kick it in here. I go out the living room. My other friend is fucking on the couch. Like I dead ass walk out into the living room and the bitch is just sitting there butt naked looking goofy, like getting ready to fuck. And so I'm like, damn, I can't sit in here. And the nigga in the other room, I don't know if he was asleep. I don't know what he was doing, but the door was locked. I couldn't go in there either. So I literally had to go sit outside in the motherfucking car because there was nowhere for me to sit. All my bitches was fucking like, and shit. Now, oh shit. (laughs) (laughs) And my bitch that was fucking in the living room. I would have sat in the living room while she fucked. There was more than one seat. Like, bitch, come on now. Shit's wild. I know how y'all get down. I'm not going outside. But she... I told you she was looking wild, so she just really looked like she didn't want me to do that. Like, she didn't want me to see. So I was like, all right, fuck it, I'm going to go sit in the car. So I sat in the car in the winter, in the cold. They didn't even give me the keys. Them bitches didn't give a fuck. I sat in that car cold as fuck all night long waiting for them bitches to get them fucking. They didn't They didn't come out that apartment until like 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I need a lighter. <laughs> We need a lighter. You got a lighter over there. They didn't. And then, and these same bitches, y'all know y'all did it, took me to a dance studio one day. They're like, oh, we can go chill with these niggas. We can go at a dance studio. I'm like, all right. We get there. Nigga, I walk in, and it's 12 play from Pretty Ricky. Pleasure P's replacement Mm -hmm. from the city. (laughs) Yeah, my guy. We didn't notice who he was at first, though, because it was... It was quick, you know. What they had knocking boots and mm-hmm. did the sorry twelve play. No, that's my nigga. We got a song. Yeah, do y'all? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we got a song. Yeah, you gotta play that. Yeah. It's in the cut though. Like it'll be hard to find. But it's we dope. we homies niggas was there. He's cool as fuck. Yeah. The nigga definitely was tripping that night too. But these bitches, we didn't know who he was. So he starts playing knocking boots on the little computer and shit. And he starts dancing and shit. And he could dance. Like, all, the niggas that was there, they could all dance. They doing flips out of each other's hands and shit. <laughs> and so he starts singing and dancing and shit. And he really started singing and he took off his jacket and he got the blue star tattoo. It's either on his shoulder or on his back. And I'm looking at it. And I look at them and I look at the computer. I said, bitch, that's motherfucking 12 play. These bitches go crazy. Next thing you know, I'm in the car again. One bitch is <laughs> Bitches loved to get pounded. And I'm just like, what what am I supposed to do? What am I going to do? Tell you no? No. I'm going to go sit in the car, though. I don't care if there is another roommate, another dancer for me. (laughs) (laughs) You didn't want one of the backup (laughs) dancers. I'm going to go sit in the car. Yeah. Them was the wild college days. Man, that was wilder than... (laughs) I was ready for it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you bitches in Bradford College, 2012. 
Yeah. We go get that earbook. They ain't have earbooks. <laughs> <laughs> but I will definitely show you. Okay. Any niggas, I swear to God, like there was so many niggas and any niggas that see this video, they're going to be like, yo, that bitch is not lying. I These remember you, girl. I remember you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hey yo, this is for the. I mean, hell. like, I bet you some head. I'll drink this whole glass of henny right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. I'm gonna pop. Y'all word. <laughs> <laughs> because um, Dej, do you got a comment or no comment? We got Dej in the she building. She didn't like my college friend. Her college life was wild. <laughs> Yeah, she was just a little... So, so you're just saying you didn't participate in none of the fucking... Now, um, that's not what I said, because... <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, you, sometimes you fuck, okay? But only if I wanted to. Them bitches was fucking like it was an obligation. Like, we went for them to fuck, and if I fucked, then it was just like, all right. You know, it wasn't often. Shout out to y'all. So, like... What was the numbers like? Because we're just talking loosely. Like, was this an everyday thing? This was <laughs> this was definitely, like, every weekend. I remember one time I was at work. <laughs> I worked at the Sheraton. You know, the Sheraton's right across the, the hotel. street. Yeah. So, shout out to all my niggas with mental health. I had a real bad anxiety <laughs> attack at work one day, right? And I passed out, like, on the floor. These bitches... Knew that I was passed out on the floor and they went to whim. They went to whim right down the street, didn't check on me. I was in the hospital, I had a concussion. Them bitches meant they was gonna go because they had shit to do. When I got out of the hospital, them bitches was still gone. I was pissed. Y'all gonna come take care of me? Mm -mm. That's wild. So, yeah, no. Nah. After Numbers? that, mm -mm. after that, after college, then what? So, after college, I lived in Mount Oliver for like two years. Um, the first year I lived there with my friend who moved away. And then I moved in two friends from college, not the friends that was hoeing two other friends. Yeah. And that was a good time too. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I've always been the life of the party. Okay. You well, know? Yeah. I, I'm just, I just am. And when I moved into two girls from college, shit got nutty. But it was, it was, we met a lot of hood niggas at the market because we lived like right by the police station. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right off of Brownsville. Yeah. That's <laughs> Niggas, and it got out of hand. Like mm -hmm. it got really wild and out of hand. I mean, I woke up one morning. They wrote "Smash Gang Headquarters" on my wall in my dining room. Deja been up there before. She know what the fuck I'm talking about. Them. I had to legitimately move. Like then I moved to Bell Super. Okay. And then I met some people in Bell Super, some friends in Bell Super, mm -hmm. and they told me they was about to shoot up my old house. Like mm -hmm. it was like, yeah. Woo, woo, woo. About to run down on this house. And I was like, damn, that was my house. I don't even live there no more. So I had to calm down a lot. So I came home, back yep. to Midland. Yep. And then I went back to school. I went to Kaplan to get my second degree because I got my first degree mm -hmm. at Bradford um, yeah. amid all the whoring. Yeah. <laughs> so I went back to school because all my friends was having babies and I didn't want to have none. I knew if I stayed home because I had a boyfriend at the time. I'll probably get pregnant. So I went back to school, broke up with my boyfriend, and I met my baby's dad, and I got pregnant. So I came back home. <laughs> okay. Back home. <laughs> came back home because obviously I didn't do what I said I was going to go do. <laughs> so I came back home. In the middle of college. So you yes. didn't finish college. No, I didn't get my second degree. Okay. But I'm happy that I didn't because they okay. shut the school down anyway. I picked I remember bad that schools. School, yeah. don't, be at, don't be like me. Yeah, I remember them schools. Yeah. So, I came back home. I had my daughter. She's five. Her name is Haven. Haven. Love her. And, yeah, now I am home. Hub. Uh, <laughs> swear. Now, I got some current questions now. Right, this is, now we're here. 
uh, first question. This question comes from Dave. Days, are you single? I am. <laughs> I am. Not seeing nobody. I see people. Okay. But I'm dating. You're dating. So yeah. you're, you're available. I am available. That was pretty. She asked. She answered that one pretty fast. Yeah. Um, can we talk about the prison guard shit? We could talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> I mean, because I, I know you're a prison guard, and I just want to hear a little bit about that before the time run out. I am not Check a the prison time. guard. Check the time What's for the me. What's the time? The time. Okay, we oh, got ten yeah. minutes. I am not a prison guard. I am a clerk. Okay. At the jail, at not the prison. the prison. At the jail. So. The jail. <laughs> okay, so it's not like you don't get to see nothing wild, like no nothing. It's not eventful. No, I'm only on the pods at the most twice a day. Twice That's a, a day. lot, though. <laughs> a lot could happen in twice But a day. I don't work on the pods. I just have to go down there to do stuff. I drop off their mail. I give them their commissary, shoes, shit like that. Have you have you made any friends there? Nope. No friends, mm-hmm. okay. Just strictly business. Strictly oh. business. I don't want no nigga in jail. Right. You don't do niggas in jail? Mm-mm. I require too much attention for a nigga in jail. Tell, tell these folks what you require in a man before we get up at her. I require 8,000% of a nigga's attention. I require you to listen to all my music and my poetry. You do poetry? I do. That's dope. I require you to not cheat. If you cheat, I'm dipping. And do not put your hands on me. Period. That's all I require. Okay. Now, you, does he have to have a job? Absolutely. I require that. Two, a, a real one with a W two. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have to have his own place? Yeah. Can't live with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking like, what if he live with his mom? Is that respectable or not? It can, as long as it don't interfere with my relationship, <laughs> I don't care. But your mama better not be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> We're too old for that. Would you go see a nigga at his mom's no. house? <laughs> <laughs> no. Because what? <laughs> we sneaking at your mom's house. Oh, your mom don't like me. Now I can't come over there no more. No, I'm not coming over there. I'll come on the holidays. Hey, y'all for this, yeah. If we stay tonight on Christmas, you know. I swear. Go. Let me get, I got a few more questions. Um, what is your definition of a hoe? I think hoes are women who do things with no respect for themselves. And there's a difference between a hoe and a promiscuous girl. A promiscuous girl is a girl that likes to have a lot of sex. A hoe is a bitch that'll fuck for anything. If you fuck because you want to and you feel good about it and you have no regrets about it and it's not in a whorish manner, like you're not fucking your niggas' friends, then I don't think you're a hoe, but I'm single. I'm a t- I'm gonna do what I want. I don't think, Yes. I think as long as you're respectable to yourself about it, cause it don't matter what another motherfucker think about you. I like that. So like, you're not putting a number on it. No. Like, There's a number, I'm sure. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, where's, what's the, when is it, like, all right, kinda like When that. you can't remember. Is that a good number? I mean, yeah. If you can't remember, right. that's, then that's whorish. I mean, but just because you do some whorish I things know, know, know. don't make you a hoe. It's just a little whorish. I got a song coming out called Whorish. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We need to Ooh. we need to hear some of that. We're gonna get some music that's too. That's a birthday track, twelve twenty four. Okay, you did birthday. So you, you got a plans on dropping music on your birthday, right? I do intend to drop some music on my birthday. We're gonna definitely have her drop some fire on y'all before we before the year ends. Period. Uh 
I can hear you in the mic too, so don't be asking me to cut nothing too. And uh, yeah, just a little disclaimer before I get up out of here too. Um, if you if you happen to come on the Toronto Beckham podcast, um, we're not going to be taking anything down. We're keeping everything. So you, if you come up here, just kind of watch what you say. Try not to say things that you don't mean because I don't need people hitting me up talking about. Hey man, I'm gonna need you to take that down, man. I ain't mean to say that, or I was drunk. Like you know, we all adults, like so. I'm drunk, but like, and if and if niggas really got a problem with what I gotta say, you gotta come on the Toronto Beckham podcast to respond, bro. Talk to me like a man. Other than that, how'd you feel about the Tato interview? Because I had to take it down. I was, you took I, it down. Yeah, I took it down because he, you know, he, he asked me to. I loved it. It was a classic. Oh, it's down, so I can't even. Damn, I have I'm putting it back up. Yeah. You, or you gotta send it to me or something. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make it like, like a link that if you got the link, you got it. Yeah. But if you don't got it, then you don't got it. The streets need Tato. They do, man, cause this nigga is like, a, like he's hard for <laughs> real. I'm sorry, I'd fuck with him. Like, I fuck with the nigga. I said he's hard, so. We just, you know, that shit just be, it be like the hate. The hate be realer than the love. But okay. I'm used to the hate. I've been doing this shit for so long that it, it, it don't even faze me, you know. And um, Give these people your social media before we get up out of here. Okay. I just changed my Instagram. Name. You can find me on Facebook at Sally Walker. You can find me on Instagram at four block chocolate four b-l-o-c-k period chocolate and that's about it we got three minutes Ooh, i got three minutes i wanted to get i wanted to get something 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 spicy oh, i asked everybody the same question what do you think about the 50 50 uh oh no fuck all that because that all right, list was so goddamn interesting that we turned this in a, a second segment. She's the first person to get a second segment. Is it everything good? So we just go and rock out into the camera dice. Um, some of the things that we didn't even get to into that we started to talk about off camera was the sex toy thing. Um, I'm, I seen your Twitter and I seen that you were promoting this. Uh, <laughs> What are you, a sex toy reviewer? Do you sell them? Tell us your role. So, I review sex toys for Amazon sellers. They contacted me. I don't really necessarily know how it started. They started DMing me on Twitter. They're like, hey, let us send you money. We'll send you these sex toys. And... <laughs> Can we send you these sex toys? You review them, and... You get to have them for free. Like, you get mm -hmm. to keep them. So, yeah, that's how I got into the sex toys. <laughs> Who approached you about that? I don't even know the people. A lot of them are, like, from other countries. I swear to God. Like, I didn't know if it was a scam or not. I could have got scammed. Yeah. You gave but, them, like, your address. They were like, we want to send you something. Like, Yeah, but they really sent it, though. This wasn't like, you know, the niggas on Twitter to be like, let me be your sugar daddy. They were like, let me send you sex toys. <laughs> so I was like, fuck it, let's go. That was hard. So <laughs> you basically just got a bunch of shit for free. Yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of shit. Are you, like, selling shit? Do you get commission or what? No. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I refer my friends to promote toys for them, like, to not even buy toys for them, but if I refer friends to promote toys for them, they give me more toys. And then, so they basically just keeping you stimulated at this point. Like they just giving you toys. You're not getting nobody. You're just reviewing shit. Well, <laughs> my reviews that I leave it boosts their shit on Amazon. So like, if you go type in like black anal stimulator, the one with the most <laughs> reviews is gonna come up, and that's where my review counts and my friends' review counts because it boosts them to the top, so then when you go looking for it, you'll see theirs first. You'd be like, oh, let me see what that's about. You read the reviews and make you wanna get it. I make you wanna buy. So you make people wanna buy these shit? Yeah. 
Where are these reviews at? I feel like we got to get one. Okay. Can, can we s- pause while I look for one or do you want me to just hurry up and pull We got to hurry up and pull All right. Hold on a second. <laughs> I don't really leave like exciting, exotic reviews. I'm not even going to hold you. It's not worth wasting the okay. time to find one. It's just the more reviews that you leave. But some people do be leaving wild ass okay. reviews, but I don't get into all that. So just they're not interesting stuff. at all. You just leave good ones. I'm just here for a number. Yeah, so you just leave clear cut. Oh, so like even like when I get a camera, like they pay those people and everything. Like, yeah, like good camera, very clear lens, no cracks or dings, 10 mm-hmm. out of 10. And they be like, oh, thank you. I see what you're saying. Yeah. That's dope. I, I want to ask you about some Twitter shit, man. All right. What, did you, what did you mean when you said asking me for shit when you don't do shit for me? Red flag. <laughs> <laughs> you retweeted that. <laughs> So, I don't know if I was necessarily talking about anyone in specific, but, like, I just don't like that. <laughs> like, don't be, don't ask me for nothing, period. Because, <laughs> no. And don't ask me for nothing if you don't do nothing for me. Because, no. Ain't nobody got time for that. We grow. People be asking you for shit that People do love shit. to ask me for stuff. They think that this is that and this ain't that. A, I am not her. No, you cannot flip shit. No, you cannot hold nothing. Mm-hmm. No, don't don't ask me. Can I get a ride? No, don't don't ask me for nothing because I'm. Or, can you rent a car or that's their favorite yes. one. Can you rent me a car, man? Oh <laughs> can you rent me a car? And it's not even like I'm not this it man. Can you rent me a car? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, the answer is no. Though I cannot because. I don't have the requirements to rent you a car. I'm right. leave you it can't at even that. Just be no. But cars. still, don't ask me no shit like that. All right, let's. We got to ask you about these tweets. And I'm putting these <laughs> tweets up on the screen. <laughs> Niggas with no personality, just dick. Oh. All right. You felt some type of way? I do be feeling some type of way because, as I said in the previous show, I'm dating. So. Oh. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jesus. I'm dating. Right. And I don't have time for a nigga that can't do nothing for me but give me some I got right. a closet full of sex toys. Right. What do I need you to come over here and fuck me for? Entertain me, nigga. Damn. Some shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Something. So niggas don't be having personality? No, they just lay there and get fucked like whores. Damn. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. I need. We gonna keep that. We gonna keep that. List his tweet. I'm putting this up here. It says, "Don't send me no boring dick pic. Better whip that motherfucker around. Make it clap or something. Make that motherfucker do something. Swear to God, cause women, women." We got all this body to see. Like, we got titties, we got ass, we got pussy, we got fupas and rolls and shit. Y'all niggas, y'all like all that shit. Feet. Yeah. Y'all want to send me the same dick laying on your leg, laying on your stomach, standing in the mirror. Like, that aggressive ass dick. Do something. Shake something, nigga. Damn. <laughs> Do something. Come. We dealt with know. you, cut. <laughs> <laughs> We go with you. And, and you, and you, you had... Some shit you wanted to talk about How you got your hoes named by color (laughs) I wouldn't say I have too many (laughs) But I mean You could call a You could call a nigga your hoe If y'all are dating Right Right Yep I'm sure that's what y'all call me (laughs) Right The fuck (laughs) Anyway (laughs) So you think they'd be like, that's one of my little hoes, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, let me go slide on this real quick. <laughs> <laughs> my little hoe. It's my little hoe. <laughs> you know my bitch. <laughs> my little hoe list. Like, you ain't calling me that shit to my face, but nigga, you my little hoe too, baby. <laughs> I love all three of y'all. <laughs> there's three. There's, there's three, and I'm not, I'm not fucking them all. That's a lot. But I have fucked them all, and and they stick around. 
They like to talk to me. I'm entertaining. We here, part two. After dark. <laughs> they love this shit. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get. I got three of them. I'm going to name one of them Pink. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to name one of them Pink. We got Orange. We got Red. And Red's been around the longest. But pink is my favorite. Oh. <laughs> so that nigga that. So pink is your favorite. Pink is my favorite. Pink is my favorite, but I've had the least encounters with pink. I'll call them encounters because I don't like to call it like sex. <clears throat> That's the nigga that live in Philly. No, I don't got no niggas in Philly. <laughs> <laughs> he just don't count in the three. He's not in the three. And he lives near Harrisburg. <laughs> he get on my fucking nerves. He, don't, he definitely don't count. <laughs> if I ain't hit it, it don't count. <laughs> if she ain't hit it, it don't count. It does not count. I like that rule. Write that down. Write that down. Okay, so we got pink, we got red, you said. Yeah, orange. Orange. Orange is the newest. He's cool. Is that the one? <coughs> I don't think so. That we just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the one that called? <laughs> no. <laughs> the comedian. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, no. Wait, Red is Red writes poetry. <laughs> I'm going to get choked. Uh, you got to cut that out. Okay, wait. You going to keep that or what? I don't know. know. We'll figure it out in the end. Yeah, I mean, it's just interesting So, shit. I mean, so the one that's been around the longest, we'll say it like that. The one that's been around the longest, he knows me the best. Like, we really, we have something. But we don't want to be together. We don't. He doesn't want to be in a relationship with anybody. I don't want to be in a relationship with him. We've just been sneaky linking so long that it just doesn't make sense to do really anything else. Does Red have a girl? Hmm? Does Red have a girl? Let him tell it no. And I don't think he does. Does Orange have a girl? Uh-uh. <laughs> does Pink have a girl? Pink got bitches. Okay. Um, yeah, Pink got bitches. So you're just one of the, the few. We don't see each other like that. <laughs> the lighter. Can you give me the lighter? <laughs> I'm like, like oh, she's like, not so. recording me. Yeah, we don't really, we don't really, do, we just be, we flirt sometimes. I call Pink one of my hoes because he's my favorite. He, he's the easiest to deal with. He's very low maintenance. He doesn't really piss me off too much. And, I don't really piss him off too much either. The other red, it's it's some whole other shit. Red's the one, like the one with the with with the bullshit, like not the bullshit from other bitches. We just argue too much because we've been fucking around so long. And then orange, like I said, he's cool. He's new. We don't see each other that often either because red, obviously. But none of them are my nigga. You got code red. So you Code only, red. There's only three niggas, and you got you keep them by color. Are they saved in your phone by color? No, they have mm, only one of them is saved. So you don't even save these niggas' number. No. Damn. So like, would you think? Would you say you're like the nigga in the situation? I would like to think that way. It it honestly helps you sleep at night when you handle a situation the way that you want to handle it and your shit is on your terms i'm gonna talk to you when i feel like it i'm gonna fuck with you when i feel like it do your thing i'm not mad you're not gonna make me look stupid we're not together you establish what you want you establish your boundaries and keep it honest all right my, this this question comes from the peanut gallery peanut gallery it is what type of men do you go for? <laughs> so, I don't really go for men. 
That's the first thing. I don't like to chase. I don't like to approach. <laughs> I don't like to do none of that because ain't no nigga about to hoe me. You're not about to make it seem like I want you more than you want me, nigga. If you want this, Damn, you're Damn, we just come. talking about the type. But I'm saying the type that I attract <laughs> varies. Okay. One of them is tall. One of them, the other two ain't tall. Okay. One of them is skinny. Two of them are skinny. One of them has like a dad body. Hmm? You want to just say it and we can cut it out? (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) Come on, babe. I I just just got it. So you can give it to me. That's what I meant. I just got it, yo. (laughs) (laughs) She just had (laughs) She said Okay Alright But I like Shorter men I like bald men But I like dark skinned men and I like my men like real bald, like not none of that fake bald <laughs> shadow bullshit. Like I like them slick, <laughs> and I like them thick, <laughs> small, slick, and thick. <laughs> but that's not what I attract. Unfortunately, I got all kinds of other shit going. Damn. But all of my men's are handsome. I love y'all daddies. Small, slim, and thick. <laughs> say small, slick, and thick. Small, slick, and thick. Not, not all over. But short, bald, beards. You can't be bald with no beard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> hey, yo. Dave, this question comes from Dave. Give us your opinion on relationships. I think that relationships are one of the most <sighs> underrated and appreciated things in America. No, the question was, what do you think the problem is in relationships? In relationships today, the biggest problem in relationships. The biggest. What do you think the biggest problem in relationships is today? Just for me to say it on the mic. I don't think that people in relationships are honest enough with each other. I think that really that be the biggest problem. Like even when it comes down to the smaller problems, like if you're not honest about what your problems are and if you're not talking about it and if you're not really being constructive and applying the criticism to the shit that your partner is saying, then the relationship's just never gonna work because then somebody's gonna be settling for something that they don't want. That's the problem. And, And this question comes from the peanut gallery. What why, what do you think about men who are single For long periods of time I think that men who are single for long periods of time Haven't really Wanted to be with anyone Like if you're Men see it the other way But really A woman can't really like Step to a man that's not ready Like, a man can step to a woman that's not ready. Like, you could step to a woman, and she couldn't be thinking about a relationship like it couldn't be on her mind at all. But as soon as you do something that she likes or that she finds intriguing, she's going to latch on to you. And regardless of whether she wants to or not, like, the things that she likes about you in her mind will make her want to be with you, regardless of whether y'all want to be together or not. So if you're fucking with a nigga who don't really want to be with nobody, then you'll always just be fucking with a nigga who don't want to be with nobody. A man's not going to be with somebody the right way unless they've really, like, done the work and decided that they that's what they're ready for and that's what they want to do. So I think men that are single for long periods of time just haven't really taken the time to decide if they want to be with somebody or they decided that they really just don't want to. But I don't think that that's, like a negative thing like I wouldn't say I'm not gonna fuck with nobody that ain't been in a relationship for a long time because they probably just didn't want to mm, that's a that's a good way to look at that because I don't look at that that way yeah because I'm thinking like you thinking about you think you looking at it from a female's perspective I'm looking at it from a man's perspective like nigga 
Fuck you ain't got no girl. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like <laughs> <laughs> That's just all I got. That's the sentence. Like, why on. don't you? Like, what you don't like about females, brother? They might be gay. No, nah, it, it, not even that. It's just like, why you don't? Would you want to just be alone for the rest of your uh, situation? You just gonna be old as hell. Just like, nigga, these holidays be coming. I, niggas be down there about to be twenty nine, thirty, and with no family. Yeah, like that's. Yeah. But the thing is, or though, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. No, that's a good way to look at it, especially with you being a man. You know, at least you don't look at it like I look at it. Because if a man looks at it like I look at it, that's a problem. But the reason why I look at it like that, and maybe there are even other women that look at it like that, is because when a man gets in a relationship and he doesn't want to be, or he's in a relationship with somebody that he doesn't want to be with, or he can't be honest about like what he wants, what he needs, what bothers him, what he can and cannot tolerate about his partner. Cause there's compromises in every relationship. But when a man's not ready to do that, you're gonna be in a miserable relationship. And then it's like a relationship that's just literally gonna end you up nowhere. Like with a baby by a bitch you don't like. Like, and who wants to be that man? So. Some like it's not, it's not that some niggas don't be ready mentally or physically to be with somebody. <laughs> God, go to hell. Hmm? <clears throat> My phone is just ringing for nothing. Answer that. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think this is a good time to get a phone call in from the peanut. Guy. I can answer the phone call. Answer the phone Actually, call. Actually, I'm gonna end, call him back. We're gonna end the show. Yeah. We're gonna end the show with this. This was a fucking. We're gonna veer off. Classic ass interview. Oh my god! <laughs> we had classic. Y'all ain't gonna hear him. Y'all just gonna hear me. That's nutty. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. We got list of the motherfucker. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm nothing. I'm just drunk. I'm drunk and I'm still doing the podcast. <coughs> I answered the phone, but they can't hear you. They can just hear me, and they don't know who's can calling. Ask him, do you want a shout out? You wanna, um, you want a <laughs> shout out on the podcast? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll do it right now. I was talking about you anyway. He <laughs> said, she said hello. I thought that, a little bit, I but I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't use your name. I gave you a color. So what color is this guy? What? What? <laughs> you gotta give us the what color? <laughs> brown. We didn't use brown. Oh. Okay, I can't talk. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta call you back. <laughs> well. <laughs> I gotta call you back. I gotta be back. Okay. That was too real. That was too real for the podcast. Yeah, he was. See what I'm talking about? What color is that? Red. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's the one. That's red. (laughs) All right, yo. We're going to sign out. Give them your social media. You can find me on Facebook at Sally Walker. You can find me on Instagram at four block chocolate that's four b-l-o-c-k dot chocolate you could find me on twitter but i don't really be on twitter but if y'all want to see my sex toys when i do them from time to time you could find me on twitter at list latrice l-y-s-l-a-t-r-i-c-e underscore x-o sunbeam yeah. sunbeam Sun- <laughs> <laughs> and y'all can follow me at toronto back on tv we signing up out it's